Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to the Wave of the World podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Bodega. As always, welcome to 2021. I'd like to introduce my guest to the left of me. Um, her name is Katie Gleason, and I'll let her speak on all of her accolades. All I know about her is that I've worked with her for two years. She used to work at Sony. Don't know why she's working with me now, but here she is. Um, yes, hello. Um, so, yes, I work with Jacob. I worked with him. Is it really been two years? Well, now this will be three years. That's crazy. Um, that's so long. Um, but yeah, I used to work at Sony. Um, reason I'm working with him is because it was an unpaid internship and I needed to pay. So, um, yes. So that's why I'm there still currently. Um, just living the dream, living the life. Any time somebody says living the dream, I, I don't, I don't. Um, living the dream. Yeah, I don't. I don't really don't resonate believe with it. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But as you can see, me and Katie have a, um, we have a good relationship. She's actually one of the reasons why, or she gave me one of the topics. She came up with the Mount Rushmore concept for me. Like she helped talk me through it. We were talking at work. Um, where we would have these conversations about what was our top favorite things in a certain category and everybody would normally like come around us and get involved <laughs> in the conversation. So yes. y'all see where it came from. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, I wanted to ask you if you had any goals that you were looking forward to achieving in this new year. Yeah. Um, so number one for sure is to get back into the industry that I moved to Nashville um, in the first place for. So like I used to work at Sony, which is obviously music related and being in a restaurant, nothing really related to, to music. So I want to get back into either um, working label side, which was with Sony or do radio, which is what I did in Orlando. Um, so that's my biggest goal um because that's kind of I mean if I moved to Nashville work in music then I'd be doing that and if I wasn't then I could have just stayed in Florida so that's kind of my mindset on it um besides that I mean just to really appreciate small moments in life I guess so being thankful and grateful for the time that you know we are kind of on a lockdown in our current time phrase um so just taking the time that I'm able to spend with my family, my boyfriend's family, all of that, um, being really thankful for, because if it wasn't this time period right now, I probably wouldn't have all the time that I do to be able to spend with them. Good answer. That was a very, that was a very well thought out. <laughs> it was, was like right a, off the top of my head. <laughs> that was like a politician answer. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> me. I, myself, Jacob, I have the goal of not losing weight, but putting on muscle, which I know a lot of people at the beginning of the year have like a certain goal that they want their body to look like. But I think that since it's about to be a year in March, since we've been quote quarantined or in this pandemic is a better term phrasing for it. Um, I think that the whole year of 2020, everybody had to pivot and shift. So I think pivoting the mindset of what does your physical health look like to you, even though we're in the pandemic, um, and mine for me is putting on muscle as opposed to losing weight. Also, all of y'all know that I've started my my merch merchandise that I'm going to be selling. Um, when that gets in, y'all will see it. I'm very excited. I just finished it last week. And when the shirts get here, I'll put them up as soon as possible, ASAP. I hope y'all like them. Um, I thank y'all for supporting the podcast. Please continue to support the podcast. You can support by buying merchandise, whether it be t-shirts, bracelets, whatever, anything else that I sell. Or you can go to patreon.com backslash work with the world share it on YouTube, Spotify, all of the things. Now we're going to jump into today's topic. Katie wanted to be surprised. Yeah. So the first thing 
that I found for today's docket is aggressive squirrels shake up Queens neighborhood. Now I'm gonna read you, I read you the headline, I'm gonna read you the news story, and then you just tell me your thoughts on it. Okay. <laughs> so a pack of aggressive squirrels have been shaking up neighborhoods in Queens, New York. There have been at least five attacks of these fluffy friends, um, attacking people on bikes, on runs, dog walks, you name it, it happened. What are your thoughts? Um, I want to know why the squirrels became aggressive. Are squirrels supposed to be like cuddly, not cuddly, but like kind of stick to themselves kind of creatures? Like we used to have a bunch of squirrels at camp, like on our college campus. And mm -hmm. like, I know you're not supposed to feed them, but like <laughs> a lot of people would feed them and they seemed kind of like nice. And I guess maybe, maybe if like, from people feeding them that they became aggressive because they're like, I need food and these people are going to give me food, but I have to be the other squirrels to it. Or maybe I have to beat the humans to the other food. I don't know. That's really odd that, I mean, are these big squirrels? Like when you say squirrels, you know, is it in SpongeBob when like Sandy becomes Bro. like the giant mean squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm envisioning. <laughs> And now y'all see why I wanted other people on the podcast, because I know where my mind goes, but there's no way I would have started thinking about Spongebob and think of Sandy, Sandy being upset during the winter. No, yeah. I think I think <laughs> of the fact that these squirrels are in New York, and New York just breathes a certain mentality. All the animals and wildlife in New York are aggressive. The, the birds, the rats, the squirrels. Pigeon, and you name it, they're <laughs> ready to fight. So this doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Interesting. But, like, how are the people handling it? Are they, like, rabid squirrels? Do like, you do call they animal control? Right. Do you, are the animal control people afraid of them? Because I feel like I would be. Do you just put them in cages in, like, Central Park? No. <laughs> you just see a bunch of cages in Central Park. <laughs> That's our new squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a display now. No. If I cut the news on and there was a live report of somebody talking about squirrels and then he just got attacked by a squirrel, I'd lose no. my mind. It would be hilarious. I feel like I feel like what I'm envisioning, because aren't I feel like all the animals up there are kind of bigger. Like I've only been to New York, well, I guess I've been there twice. And they have aren't the squirrels there bigger than here? Not really. Oh. No, not really. The rats are. The rats are definitely. The rats are huge. The rats <laughs> are the size of babies. <laughs> Newborn That's babies. Gigantic. Those are very big rats. Um, no, but I feel like, and then how do you protect against yourself, like from the squirrels? Do you just run? Do you try to fight them? Do you just like I don't know? Like do you? It's not like you have like when you or hiking and you have like bear spray or like you see an alligator and you like run and like it's a squirrel they jump <clears throat> they can jump on you and why are they trying to why are they attacking people like what is causing them to attack the people well, they must have had a meeting and <laughs> had like, a little squirrel you know, this enough is enough they're tired of the people <laughs> <laughs> they're tired of being disrespected one lady was quoted saying it just basically runs up my leg, and I'm like, okay, squirrel, hello, what are you doing? He That's either, not a quote. <laughs> he either, <laughs> that is a direct quote. He oh, my God. Bit, he either bit or scratched me on my neck, and then I must have reached over, and the next thing I know, it's a cage match, and I'm losing. So now we have WWE matches with uh, <laughs> Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> That's insane. I don't think... I don't know. They had to have been conditioned to one, be okay with coming up to people because typically if you go up to a squirrel, they're going to run away from you unless they're used to seeing people. Right. And then, then you kind of, it's like any wild animal. You kind of got to coax it with food or something. And then from there, so I want to, it's probably from people either one feeding them or maybe they've just like run out of some sort of food storage. And so they're attacking people because they know the people have food. Cause what, aren't they supposed to be in hibernation? It's winter. Not in New York. Like I said, there's no holes bars in New York. It is free game. They still got to eat. 
That's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it's probably from trade stuff, but that's, I think I would just, scr- I, w- I would just like go in fetal position if a squirrel attacked me. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> duck and cover and just let it attack me and let, finish me off and then I'm good to go. All right. Well, there you have it. Katie's the next meal for the squirrels. I'm the next meal for <laughs> Are they carnivorous? They eat peanuts. I think they'd eat meat. I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's wildly unimaginable that a squirrel would eat meat. Oh my God. That's wild. Okay. Anyways, (laughs) y'all see what's going on here. Uh, I have no way to transition into these next topics. So I'm just going to go ahead and We're just going to go into it. So a North Dakota man was threatened to kill his former boss for ignoring a Facebook friend request. (laughs) So, um, don't know how to say his last name. I'm assuming it's Russian, but his first name is Caleb. Um, don't know anything else about North Dakota either. But There's nothing in North Dakota besides like Mount Rushmore, right? Mount or, Rushmore. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Um, so, this man, his name is Caleb. He would send Snapchats. He would post a photo of himself wearing a black cap, a black vest, and a red and black plaid long sleeve shirt with a message to his boss, his family, needing to replace their door. Security footage from that night confirms that the suspect who kicked in the door of the home wore the same outfit. He was quoted saying, accept my friend request or I'm going to murder you. Oh, so like, let's put a pause on social media then. <laughs> that was really coming to that somebody's not gonna accept your friend request. That you're just gonna go murder them then. Oh no. So again, maybe it's because there's nothing to do in North Dakota. I Isn't it? I didn't think they had Facebook in North Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, are they still in the 1800s? <laughs> like, it, that's like literally so yesterday. Did you see, um, I mean, not really similar, but kind of similar, that people just get angry over the smallest things. But somebody at the Nashville West Target was shot. And mm. that's like the one by me because he got in an argument with somebody and the guy just shot him. Mm-hmm. And it's just like people just get mad. Everybody, okay, mandatory anger management classes and mandatory social media is not that serious classes. <laughs> social <laughs> media is not that serious. That is hilarious. That is wild to be that that concerned. Like is his feel like his feelings must have been that hurt that he must have been like there had to be some bigger issue there besides just a Facebook friend request. You never know because like y'all heard on the last episode, the the Christmas bomber, he he just did it out of nowhere. I I don't know. People are wild. Like just it doesn't make sense to me. It just go I feel like at the end of the day, shouldn't you want to be the one to deny the, the friend request over being the one not accepting the friend request. I don't know if that really made sense. So like, I would prefer to be the person who is like, oh, I don't want to be friends with you as compared to trying to be friends with everybody and then keep getting denied. Like, I feel like that's a mental switch you have to flip in your head as to be like, okay with yourself enough to be like, well, I don't need to be friends with them. Let me just delete like I'll stick to myself as compared to I see I see what you're saying I thought you meant like in the physical like social media app where I you can do that too I guess like physically like blocking somebody from being your friend before they even try to do it if that makes sense that I mean apparently he should have done that I guess (laughs) like couldn't even I'm sorry I don't have a Facebook (laughs) (laughs) You you can add me on my space yeah, I'd be like. <laughs> Speaking about blocking stuff, so there was a hospital employee that was arrested for destroying 500 doses of the coronavirus vaccine. Why? Um, there was a male in the Aurora Medical Center um, who destroyed 500 doses. And if you don't know about the COVID vaccine, that um Pfizer has created it's in two doses so the first 
dose introduces you to coronavirus. And then the second one doesn't cure it, but it helps your body get accustomed to it. Um, so and this may, they're supposed to be stored at a certain degrees between 36 and 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And this man just cranked up the heat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. No vaccines for anybody. So what is that? So did he destroy the second part? Is that what you said? Or the first part? It was just 500 doses. It wasn't necessarily the first or the second part. I would part. say, like, if somebody got the first round and then he destroyed the second round, like, I want to know, like, not that I want to know what happens, but, like, I'm curious is, like, what would actually go wrong is if he got the first dose and then he didn't get the second dose. There but, aren't that many doses, even enough for everyone in America right now. Pfizer yeah. only made like a million uh, doses of the vaccine, but it was only, it was 500,000 of the first round and 500,000 of the second round. So. Okay. So then I wonder, he worked for them. So he, I would assume would believe in the first place that I mean, maybe not, because if, if they probably are, feel like they're just kind of pulling healthcare workers from a lot of different places because they're just, prob I believe anyway, that they're so understaffed. But I wonder if he just thinks that the vaccine isn't good or like doesn't work or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why he destroyed them all. Uh oh, conspiracy. <laughs> something y'all don't know about Katie. She loves a good conspiracy. I love my conspiracy. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, to me, that's my explanation for that is he must not think it works. But I mean, or maybe, does it? I mean, or uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it does work and he just wants people to continue being sick. Flip side of that. Interesting. Um, but I mean, either way, very malicious because there's no way he could have just been like, oopsies, I was cold. Like, let me, I, I wouldn't. Be. <laughs> I was cold. <laughs> <laughs> I was cold. Well, well in this, in fine. this hospital, in this wing of the hospital, we wear jackets. So, oh. so yeah, no, he, he did that on purpose. Did it, did they say what happened to him? Did he, I'm assuming he went to prison or. Oh he yeah. He got fired. Um, it? the hospital, um, that's the damage to property right they said they were quoted saying it's a val violation of our core values also i want to correct myself i said it was pfizer vaccines but it's actually moderna but Bro. same thing yeah so, i mean it's a vaccine so they charged him with reckless and dangerous safe endangering safety adultering a prescription drug and criminal damage to property so yes you're correct it's enough for my company. <laughs> I'm here for the FBI. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, was your bank account blessed on January 1st of 2021? Oh, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I think there might be an issue. Not an issue. But like my tax return still hasn't come in. And it's been like so long and I, every time I check it, it says it's like still processing. So I wonder if that has something to deal with the 600 because I'm, I'm waiting for it. I want it. But like, that's just odd to me. Like it doesn't even, cause I've seen a lot of, my brother got a notification. Um, and then my boyfriend's like family got some notifications that it was like pending and that it wouldn't hit until the fourth or something. But I mean, it's the fourth today. So, and I, I mean, I'm checking my bank account every freaking day, almost like twice, three times a day. I'm like, where's my money? <laughs> but um, I want it to be. Did you get yours? My bank account was stimulated at midnight <laughs> on January 1st, 2021. And oh. like I have said before, with the last round of stimulus checks, y'all go invest that money. I told since the last episode, I'll check live for y'all. Since the last episode, when I told y'all to go invest in Tesla, I put 150 more dollars, and now it is up to 730. I think the last time I was talking about it, it was at 660, and I still don't know what to do at this point other than to tell you to join Robinhood go and, and invest. Yeah, and invest your money. Let your money work for you, so you can be financially stable in the future. But for this topic. Um, 
the state of Maryland um, officially pushed for state funded 2K stimulus checks by using its $1.2 billion rainy day fund. So everybody in Maryland that qualified for it got $2,000 instead of the 600. I am serious. I'm moving to Maryland. <laughs> I'm going on up there. I need some crab cakes. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend's family's from Maryland. I can basically be a resident. Just sign me up. Wow. I'm jealous. Why can't Tennessee do that? That's why states operate on a state-to-state -state basis. Reasons like this. But don't but, they have a lot of taxes in, in Maryland, though? So what was that? They have a lot of taxes in Maryland, don't they? So I'm, I guess I'm sure they do. I feel like it might even out. Not like necessarily even out, but like even out kind of as if they get, the, I mean, that's a lot of money. Imagine if the the Senate pass passes. I know they've talked about it multiple times about raising the 600 to 2000. But just if they've already sent out the 600, just sending another 1400. But imagine if they sent the 2000 and then people in Maryland got an extra 2000. You know how hot the rest of the United States would be? <laughs> there'd, be there'd be more riots. <laughs> it would go wild again. Everybody would be moving to Maryland. Instead of everybody moving to Nashville, everybody's going to be moving to Maryland. Baltimore is going to have an explosion of, of people. Being like, I was here before then. <laughs> that, um, I don't know if you know, but Maryland is one of them states that you got to zoom in on the map to find out where it's at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's, they're going to be building sky rises real quick. <laughs> we need to put our people somewhere. Oh, my gosh. Good That's Lord. What a time to be alive. Speaking about Maryland and small states. Um, so there was a Massachusetts cop that was um, about to arrest a family for stealing groceries, but instead... He bought them dinner. So I want to give praise to because a that's lot of times in news, we don't hear the good stories enough. We only hear the bad stories because that's what catches everybody's attention. But this um, officer, Matt Lima, was responded to report shoplifting at a stop and shop. Two women and two children were caught um, putting grocery bag, putting grocery items into grocery bags at the self checkout. And the woman explained to him how every how COVID affected her and she lost her job and he bought $250 worth of grocery gift cards and yeah I thought, that, I thought that was pretty cool I wish everybody could be like that man like but everybody can't like no, there's no there's no way <laughs> there's no way at least like there's a select few like or at least like somebody like this guy and hopefully he has a family and can raise his family and like his kids to be like that and can, I don't know. And hopefully, I don't know. I feel like goodness goes around. And so maybe that family, like, yes, they needed help, but maybe they're able to somehow help another family out in need. Just like, well, it doesn't have to be like, Oh, sharing groceries or whatever, but just a little small hand. Like if somebody needs you know, help crossing the street, they help them cross the street. Why is that the, the, the good Samaritan <laughs> thing, like walking somebody across the street as if they weren't able to themselves. <laughs> very fair. <laughs> Makes everybody sound super weak. <laughs> like, oh, let me carry this 100 pound, 75 year old lady across the street because she couldn't walk before. She couldn't walk. She, before. I don't know how she made it to the crosswalk in the first place. Yeah, that's <laughs> Jenna. She's, just, <laughs> she's from the future, actually, and she just, you know, portaled there. <laughs> There's a couple of um, chivalrous things, or I guess you would say generous things that I don't really understand. Uh, that is one of them. Um, putting A man putting a coat over a puddle so a woman can walk over it, I've never understood that. Because what do you do with that jacket as a man? Yeah. You can't put it back on. I'd rather you like give me my the jacket if I'm cold than as to like, and then like, what really kind of shoes are is, I mean I guess suede shoes can get ruined in water but like can you not go also heels heel? like if you're heel if you're wearing heels and your like foot is exposed I get that but I'm the person looking for an alternate route I'm definitely not taking my jacket off <laughs> I would just pick her up 
figure out how to take it to the puddle. Piggyback it, something. Oh, piggyback. I was thinking more like sack of potatoes. You just throw it over the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would rather piggyback it than be like a sack of potatoes. You're kind of, I feel like, well, I feel either way, if you're wearing a dress, you're going to be exposed. So hopefully that person's wearing pants. If if I did, which is why I said sack of potatoes, I can at least, you know, try to cover up. Cover up, if yeah. I have both of your legs. What are we doing? (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, no, that is a very odd one. Another one I would say is opening a door, which I still do, just because I feel like that's generous. Uh, Or not generous, but like courteous. I love when (laughs) my boyfriend opens up doors for me. He doesn't really do it as often. We have been together for a while. So in the beginning, he would open up like car doors for me and like, he still, like, to this day, will, for the most part, open up, like, building doors. But if it's, like, my apartment, I have a key to it, so I have to open it. But Yeah, um, that's different. Yeah, unless, like, I feel like if we're going to somewhere nice, like, he'd probably open up the door, like, the car door for me. But, I mean, besides that, I mean, it's mainly just, like, buildings, restaurants, stuff like that. I it's like a- it. I think, it's, I think it's just nice. I can definitely yeah. open the door by myself. I'm not... Like, I, I can reach out, pull it. Sometimes he freaking pushes it once a pull. So then I'm like, I can fix that myself. But I don't know. It's just a nice gesture. What's the other one I was thinking of? For the life of me, I can't think of it. <laughs> you hate when the thought is like right there. Yeah, right on the tip of your tongue. But it's always men doing something for women. Oh, so women never have to be chivalrous for men. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> and I don't. Let's look up the definition of the word chivalry because I don't feel like that applies to. It's like a medieval term, I like for knights. Like, I, I mean, I could be making that up. Yep, you're exactly right. The medieval knightly system with its religious, moral, and social code. So I have no idea what that has to do with opening a door for a woman so it's because i think like back in the olden days everybody or i mean some people still say it now but you they you want your knight in shining armor so if chivalry is dealing with that i mean they're probably saying something along the lines of like chivalry was probably a term to describe your knight in shining armor and it's something that you can i mean we don't have i mean Probably, yeah. probably any Scotland. any men listening, let me know the last time you picked up a sword and shield, please. <laughs> hey, okay, they had those medieval night shows at like in Orlando. Those men do it. <laughs> but I mean, I think it would still be I mean, I think it's just some, either one people who are who romanticize everything, two who are probably a little bit more traditional. And I don't know. I feel like those are the people who really expect not necessarily expect it. Like, I don't expect to be my boyfriend to be chivalrous. I want him to be, but I don't expect him to be. Like, if he's not, then he's not. But it's just, it's like, it's nice. I don't know. Especially because I just finished watching the show Bridgerton on Netflix, and it's like an old, like in the 1800s style. And whenever I'm, I see stuff like that, I'm like, oh, I need to start talking in a British accent. And like... <laughs> Like, oh, why can't men be uh, so charming and whatever? But I mean, it's just, it's different in the times and whatnot. But there's other, I think there's other things now that people consider chivalrous as compared to back in like, I don't want to say the olden days, but back in like the 1900s. Oh, they, oh, they were because the it was days. 1170 to 1220. No, so. so they're <laughs> old. <laughs> but like, so today I feel like people would consider like commenting on your Instagram post chivalrous or like, like, um, I mean, that's so like Gen Z, Gen X, Gen whatever millennial of me to say, but like, that's our, how I just, we were talking about social media, but our world revolves so much around social media now that, and especially right now with, we're not supposed to really be with people. I mean, the way you can show people that you care about them and that you have like quote unquote manners is through online. So whether that's like liking a Facebook post or commenting on your Instagram and like hyping you up and being like, Oh, you look so good or 
something or something like that. Or, I mean, even sending a text message in the morning, like if I ever, my boyfriend and I usually, if we're not together, we'll say like, good night, good morning. Like to me, that's something that I would consider kind of chivalrous because it's like, you think like it's my, your last thought in the day and first thought in the morning. So I think it just kind of changes and ev evolutionizes throughout, I mean, time, I guess. Doesn't have to be putting a jacket over a, a puddle. The whole time that you were talking, I can't say that I agree with that just because I don't really, I feel like there's another word for what we're describing and it's not chivalry because yeah. another uh, non-historical, uh, I guess it is historical uh, definition of it is the combination of qualities expected of an ideal knight, especially courage, honor, courtesy, justice, and a readiness to help the weak. Mm -hmm. Readiness to help the weak is the walking the old lady cross the crossbow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. <laughs> and I will never call a woman weak because they have the ability to give life to everyone. So can't do that. That's fair. <clears throat> I feel like that almost described like a firefighter or like a police officer or like a paramedic. Like with yeah. that definition, it's kind of like those kind of type of people. Yeah. Like first responders. Very true. Mm -hmm. So now we've come to the segment. Thank y'all for listening. If you made it this far, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have just been all over the place. Um, so now we're going to jump into the final topic created by young Katie Gleason, but I will let her choose. I'm going off the top. Normally I have my, um, I have my list set out, but I, let her choose just because she's basically the one that helped me create this whole idea. So um, we can stick with the theme since we were talking about squirrels and everything, and we can do a Mount Rushmore of animals or okay. go completely opposite, straight out of left field, and we can do a Mount Rushmore of satisfying smells. Ooh. Oh my God, that's so hard. To, that's so hard to decide. I kind of wanted to do the smells just because. Sounds good. Yeah, I feel like that's that's gonna be like way harder than animals. I feel like animals, I'm done, 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 done. Mm -hmm. But smell. satisfying smells. So I want to clarify a little bit. It doesn't the, have to be something that like you just like. Like it doesn't have to be something that you can eat or something that you just like like something that like you smell and you're like, oh, that was refreshing. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so. I'm going to list all them out and then I'm going to order them because I have to think these through. So one of them, not number one, but one of them is definitely like walking into a like bookstore. Okay. So like walking in and it's kind of like, like the smell or maybe it's just like this. I want to say like the smell of like a fresh book. Like gotcha. you just went into the bookstore, like Barnes and Noble and you're picking one out and like you flip the pages, like that smell. I don't, I guess it's like fresh paper or something. I don't know. But <laughs> no, really, like, oh, it's like nostalgic, I guess. Like it's just it's a, not, it smells like words in here. It smells, <laughs> that's the word. it smells like words. So that's going to be one of them. Um, a new car, because typically when you are buying a new car, one, you, probably either need it because you totaled a car aka me or two me too uh, yeah <laughs> or two like you probably i mean bought a new car because you worked really hard and and were able to afford it or something like that so that's what i kind of associate with like new car smells is mm -hmm. um so so am i i'm doing five right four no that's four four okay so that's two um Three is probably like right after I clean my apartment and it smells not necessarily of bleach, but like cleanliness. So that like, I don't know, I don't like it kind of, I don't want to say it smells kind of like a burning smell, but like when you vacuum and like mm -hmm. you got everything clean and like you can see the little marks in the carpet and like I've Clorox wiped everything and like scrubbed like the scrubbing bubbles in the shower and like everything's washed so it kind of smells like laundry detergent and like that combination of just cleanliness of an apartment or a house mm -hmm. I'm gonna combine this one 
Because I'm sure there's like there's a lot of smells that go into that, but I mean, as an aroma, it's kind of all one smell. Just the smell of being clean. Right. Exactly. Um, and then my last one. Um, I kind of want to say so. One of my, I kind of had an essay on this one back when I was in school about like our favorite smell, but um, so kind of similar, but. I used to go to, my family has a timeshare in Florida and Cocoa Beach, and I have never really known the smell of it, but that smell is something that, like, as soon as I walk in, I'm, like, instantly relaxed, like, I mean, it, it's, like, a happiness smell to me, and I think it's something, I mean, it's something with, like, coconut and, like, salt and something else, but it's, it's very hard to describe because I have never smelled anything else like it. And it's only in that resort, um, that at least that I've smelled it and I've searched for candles and I've searched like, like so many different places to try to find a a scent that smells like it. That's probably going to be my number one only because I've loved it for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't get to experience it as much anymore since I live in Tennessee. So that's going to be my number one. Two is going to be the books. Three, new car smell, and four, the clean apartment. (laughs) What are your four? I think in no particular order, I'll do the same thing kind of like you did. Um, New cards, just because I used to play different Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Spades, Go Fish, whatever. What what do new cards smell like? They Is smell like new cards. Like, they have a distinct. They have a distinct smell, just like interesting. A just new like a car, like car. a new car. Like it's, it's a combination of everything that's put together in the car. That's not like one particular, um, smell. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I don't like the activity of it, but when freshly cut grass like just smelling freshly cut grass Mm -hmm. there is no uh, like it just that to me is what america should smell like i just it just reminds me of florida (laughs) and hot and sticky in summer and but But i do like it i know what you mean it's just like i like the whole the whole activity of it obviously it's gross but if you're just like oh uh, oh, a bystander. Grass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to actually do the work to cut the grass. But no, once no, you cut no. it, man, I can stand out here for days. Yeah, I'd love to uh, to clean apartment smell if somebody else did it for me. That's fair. <clears throat> okay. Um, number three, anything cinnamon related. I've, anytime yeah. I smell cinnamon, it just like the it makes me taste it. Mm. And I don't necessarily want something cinnamon, but cinnamon, the, the smell of cinnamon, the taste, I feel like that's one of those things that it tastes exactly how it smells, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, I agree to that. It's <clears throat> one of the scents that I have never liked. <laughs> what? I'm un-American about it. I hate cinnamon. I hate the taste of cinnamon. I hate the smell of cinnamon. I like I like cinnamon sugar. Like that's different though, but cinnamon by itself, I absolutely fantastic. Uh uh-uh. uh, nope. I've never liked it. I don't know why. I feel so un-American and so unspirited, especially around the holidays. But I can't do it. It's literally August through February. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's <That's> beautiful. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It I doesn't know. belong. It doesn't belong in the summer. I never had hot cinnamon or smelled cinnamon in any environment yeah. hot, mm-hmm. but. I probably wouldn't. Ten out of ten, don't recommend. This yeah, no, thing. I don't recommend that either. <clears throat> and then number four. This is tough. This is harder than I thought. <laughs> I would have to say, just not necessarily a specific fragrance, but like clean laundry. Because yeah, whenever you're like. Whenever I like put on clothes that like just came out of the dryer or like put new bed sheets on and then got in bed and it smelled everything that was marinating nice. in the washing machine and in the dryer, that yep. it just feels like you're being wrapped in the scent and no feeling. Do you have a favorite scent of laundry detergent off of based off that question? Um, it's a tie between like lavender and like an orange citrus. Ooh, I like the lavender. 
Gain lavender is like cold. calming, but okay. the orange citrus yeah. is like refreshing and it's still, it mm -hmm. smells clean. Yes. Uh, do you use the un the fresh scent Unstoppables or whatever they're called? I, Me oh, hold on. I dump like a whole cap in there. I'm like, oh, smell nice. <laughs> Listening via podcast. Oh. Um, I have the Costco size unstoppable. But Downey, okay. if you want to sponsor me, I promise <laughs> I speak yeah. truth to the product. I loved it. I love you. Good. You can't tell. These are the size of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're bigger than your head. <laughs> That's this incredible. one this one is the the fresh. It just oh, kind of smells minty. And then this one is April fresh and it smells like spring. Nice. And I also have two big ass bottles of fabric softener too, but I'm not going back over there because those are literally the same. Not everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, Incredible. I'm glad y'all made it this far. If you've made it this far, give me a <laughs> kudos to you. Um, yeah. I want to thank my guest Katie Gleason for joining me today. We have these conversations at work all the time, anyway. So. Um, yeah, but I still, I, I still appreciate you for your time. Um, please continue to like, share, subscribe on YouTube. Um, share the podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, sticking with the letting out an episode at the beginning and end of every month, so you can catch me here. Every, on the first and last Thursday of the month. I've been your host, Jacob Bodega, and we'll see you at the end of the month. Bye. Thanks for listening. I appreciate all of your support. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. You can find me here at Wave of the World Podcast on YouTube. You can also find me on any podcast platform. If you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, please send them to waveoftheworld19 at gmail.com. And this beat is provided by Terminal Beats. <laughs>